Oh, hello! So as a quick disclaimer, I want to tell you guys that I'm doing this little mini-series to help you guys out with how to get started on social media like Instagram and YouTube because it is easily the most number one question I get asked about general things, like non-makeup related question. It's this. I wanted to make this series for you to help you guys, hopefully, but it's just my advice based on my experience. I'm not an expert social media person. Meteor? Meteor. Like an asteroid. Please don't take this as me saying that I think that I... Just don't take it in any kind of weird way, okay? I'm just trying to help you guys by telling you what I know and what I did and what worked for me. And that's it. These are the topics that are going to be in this mini series. If they're all done, they will all be linked right here so you can just click them. I'm gonna tell you what I know about all of them. Today, as you might have been able to guess from the title, is camera and lighting. Let's begin. So a lot of you are at different stages in your social media journey when you're asking me about cameras and lighting. Some of you guys want to know the most basic things you're going to need just to start from complete scratch. Some of you want to know kind of like a moderate affordable level. And some of you want to know what equipment you'll need to become a full-time YouTuber or Instagrammer or social media person. But to tell you guys about those, I'm going to hand it over to voiceover Mikey. That way I can tell you while I show you. That way this video won't be 30 minutes long. So the most basic option I can recommend is what I used when I first started taking makeup pictures for Instagram. It looks and sounds ridiculous, but if you have Instagram, you probably have a smartphone and therefore you have one of these. A front facing camera on your phone and a light bulb, any light bulb. Take a lampshade off if you have to. Get close to it, but not so close that you burn your peach fuzz off. This is the most basic, but if you wanna up your basicness a bit, flip your phone around and use the camera that is on the regular back end of the phone. You want to do this because it has a better lens. And if you're really bad at aiming at your face, hold a mirror behind your phone in another hand so that you can see what's going on on the screen. It's goofy and kind of a pain in the ass, I know, but this is what I did to take all of these pictures during my 100 days of makeup. So as you can see, it's not the best quality ever, but if you're not sure yet that you want to or can spend money on some better equipment, this is a very easy starting option. If you take nothing else away from this video, please know that you don't need something extravagant to start. So don't let the absence of the more pricey or technical options stop you from trying. Your other lighting option in basic land is natural lighting. You can't control it at all, but it is free and it usually still looks pretty great. I took all of these early Instagram photos by standing close to a window in the daytime. Or you can just go outside if you're not a hermit. Overcast cloudy days like these or what's called magic hour is best to shoot in. High noon is no bueno for looking cute. This basic bish tier and advice is mostly for taking Instagram photos, although you can shoot tutorials this way if you really want to, if you plant your phone on a selfie stick, or if you find a way to prop it up somehow. But it's pretty impractical to do it this way. The next tier is what I'd recommend for starting YouTube videos with if you can save up some money for it, or for upping your photo game on Instagram if you're looking to start transitioning into doing social media posting full time. Invest in a small mirrorless camera. Mirrorless does not mean that it has a flip out screen so that you don't need to use a mirror to see yourself, but you would ideally be looking for one of those too. I use a Sony a5100 in this case, but other examples are Sony NEX7, Canon PowerShot G7X, Canon EOS M3, Samsung NX300, and the list goes on. These generally fall in the $500 to $800 range, but sometimes you can find ones that are lower and some are going to be higher. These make shooting pretty easy, especially if you're new to cameras. Flip out screens allow you to see yourself, they can autofocus for pictures and during video recording, they can auto everything else for the image like aperture, shutter speed, and ISO, things that you don't even necessarily need to know what they are. It'll adjust the image for you so that it looks good. And for many of them, you can send your images and video directly to your computer or smartphone through a wireless connection. It really takes all of the guesswork out of it for you and for the price, the ease and the image quality is pretty great. I use this now mainly for vlogging and casual Instagram selfies, but this would be a great option if you're just starting out on YouTube like I mentioned. Lighting wise in this bracket, I recommend a few different options. Your cheapest and simplest would be a clamp light. This is a hardware light that you can find at any local hardware store like Home Depot, Lowe's, etc. And then you can place any bulb inside of it. These are especially great for quickly adding colored lights like my current setup here or adding a harsh directional light for SFX makeup looks especially. Like you see here, putting the light on the side shows texture and depth on my skin and it makes everything more dramatic. This is why it's great for SFX looks. It shows them off the best. 
Now these aren't great for beauty makeups though because for beauty you generally want soft even light that doesn't create shadows. Other options here are to either get a soft box light or two. They look like this. They create soft even diffused light which can be great for beauty lighting or you can place these to the sides to also create that nice dramatic directional lighting that's great for SFX looks as well. These are pretty darn versatile and they're affordable, usually costing between $20 and $50 each, but they are a little bit bulky to store and they're a pain to break down. There's lots of other lights, but the last that I'd recommend for this is a ring light. Some are really tiny and can be mounted onto the camera lens itself, and some are bigger like this one. I got mine off of Amazon for $100 and it's a great quick light to set up for beauty looks or when you just want a bright flat light so that whatever you're showing can be seen very clearly. They're also used frequently for beauty shots because they put a pretty little ring reflection in your eyeballs. You can find one with a dimmer too so that you can control the brightness, but even at their lowest brightness, be careful because they are very, very, very bright. And because it's so relevant, let's relive this again for the lulls. The last here is my recommendation for those looking to do social media or YouTube full time where you'd want great quality. I'm not going to delve too much into these because it could be a whole series in itself and this is mostly just to help with beginners, but I would recommend a DSLR or professional camera from here. For nearly every video on here I have used a Canon 7D, occasionally now a 6D, but other cameras like this would include a Canon 70D, a Nikon D810, a Canon 5D Mark III, Nikon D5300, Pentax KS1, Canon T5i, and so on. If you want to go really ham, just go for an Aria Alexa or a Black Magic or Red, but very, very few channels use or would benefit from one of those, so I'm not going to get too much into that. DSLRs price-wise will run you a grand and up, and lenses is where things can get really expensive. This level definitely has a bigger learning curve because you will need to know at least the basics, like what f-stop, ISO, and shutter speed mean. And because these cameras generally do not have a flip-out screen, you will also need a camera monitor or a cord to connect it to your computer screen or someone's help so that you can make sure that you're in frame, in focus, and all those kinds of things. But the quality with these cameras is significantly better. Lighting-wise for this tier, I would recommend getting all or a combination of the lights mentioned in the last tier rather than just one. Some other great options that I don't have here are LED panel lights and umbrella lights, but I usually use a combination of clamp, softbox, and ring light in my tutorials depending on what the look calls for. Also as a quick guide to a good basic lighting setup, a general rule of thumb is to do three point lighting. Please google that and look it up because as I mentioned before, all of these things could turn into an entire video themselves, but I still want you to know about it. That is overall good lighting that will look professional and fabulous. That was a lot of info, so to make things simple and so that you can see the differences easily, this is the same lighting setup using three different cameras recommended from each tier that we just went over. And this is roughly the same camera setup using different sources of lighting that we just went over. And here's a chart of the pros and cons, I would say, of each tier. You can either soak it all in in these next few seconds, or you can screenshot it for later and reference it as you need to. And lastly, here's a quick view of my current filming setup. Roughly, like I said, the lights change every time I shoot, but also keep in mind that I've changed my filming setup completely several times since starting YouTube, but this is just my current one. I'm always looking for ways to make it easier to film because I do not currently have a room dedicated for filming, which is ideal. But because I don't, I move things around and I set this up in our living room each time I need to shoot a tutorial. The part of my setup is based on that mobility factor. If you have a room dedicated to filming, you could have a different setup than this. And that's a crash course in cameras and lighting based on what I did. At the end of the day, some people think that I probably shouldn't be talking about these kinds of things. But to me, nothing that I'm going to be talking about is what's going to separate someone from being successful on YouTube or not. It's going to come down to things that cannot be easily taught, like drive, talent, passion, um, patience, creativity. But I hope this gives you a little bit more of the tools that you need to see whether or not you can cultivate all those other things within your content on social media. So I'm only really sharing the more pesky navigational side of these things, and I just wanna pass that along to you guys. There's nothing that says that you can only follow one YouTuber or person on Instagram at a time, so there's no reason why we should feel like we're in competition with each other. Let's lift each other up, and like make cool creative content and stuff.
Okay. See ya.